Some people think that working on a CNC router is easy. You press a button and it works by itself. There is an opposing view that working with a CNC is at least as difficult as solving the Yang-Mills theory. In this video, we'll set the record straight and inform you about the steps involved in operating a CNC routing machine and what knowledge is needed at each step. You're on the Verma channel. Welcome to the world of CNC. What is CNC? CNC stands for Numerical Control and is not just for milling machines, but also for laser and plasma machines, as well as 3D printers and some other equipment. The basic principle of operation of CNC is that the machine tool has moving parts, which are set in motion by the machine control. It also receives data from sensors and controls other elements of the machine tool. The control system is loaded with a control program in the form of G-code which contains coded information about the following aspects. The position and movement of all machine elements. The speed of these movements. The used cutting tools, spindle speed, program cycles such as drilling, cutting or milling and other nuances. The control system reads the G-code and successively converts it into signals which it feeds to the drivers. The drivers in turn activate the motors which bring the machine into operation. The main elements of a CNC milling machine that the control system controls are the gantry, which moves in the x-axis, the spindle, which moves in two axes, along the gantry in the y-axis and perpendicular to the gantry in the z-axis, and the spindle itself, because it must also rotate and thus be put into motion. Now that you understand the general principle, it's time to learn more about how to write G-code. Designing the product and translating it into G-code this is what G-code looks like. At first glance, this might scare you, because after all, this is essentially a programming language. But it's not that frightening. You don't need to know every command. You can simply create a 2D or 3D model of the part in any CAD program, and then use CAM to translate the model into G-code. What's more, there are CAD CAM packages that combine the ability to create a model and translate it into G-code. If you need to create a 2D model, any vector editor is sufficient. For example, CorelDRAW, Adobe Illustrator, or LibreCAD. However, you'll still need a CAM to translate the file into G-code. CAD CAM software such as SolidWorks, Vectric Aspire, MasterCAM, AutoCAD, ArtCAM, and many others are suitable for creating 3D models. By the way, if you need training, you can buy it from us along with the machine. The Verma engineers will come to your shop connect the equipment, set it up and give you a basic or advanced CNC router course of your choice. Once you have a 2D or 3D model and have moved on to the CAM, you'll need to specify a number of parameters, such as the selected cutter, its shape and size, and also set the feed rate, i.e. the spindle speed in X and Y, the depth in Z, the spindle speed for each machining step and other machining parameters. You can also run a simulation to look at the machining process and its results, and to identify any errors in the layout or settings. If you personally find all this CAD CAM stuff too complicated, or simply don't have the time, you can always find ready-made layouts online, including free ones. Putting the machine into operation First, the control program must be transferred to the controller. In the case of CNC milling machines, the controller can come in three variants a separate computer with software such as NC Studio as a controller, a DSP controller as a control panel or a separate multifunctional rack. The latter option offers a broader range of functions. As for the choice between the NC Studio and the DSP controller, we prefer the DSP because it's convenient and mobile, allows you to adjust parameters during the operation, does not suffer from dust, and dust is inevitable in the milling shop. Files can be loaded into the DSP memory directly from a flash drive, which means you can significantly save on the purchase of a computer. And most importantly, this controller is more reliable and will not fail. Before you start the machine, you should check that it's ready for operation. All systems are connected, including the spindle cooling. Be sure to check the chiller before operation. Next, make sure the material is securely fastened to the workbench. Remove any excess material from the workbench and it's best never to place anything on the workbench except the material being worked on. Make sure that the cutter does not hit the clamps during machining. With a vacuum table, clamping the material is easier and the vacuum table also allows the edge of the workpiece to be machined without having to move the clamps. 
Fix the selected cutter securely in the spindle collet. Once you have clamped the cutter, you need to set the zero point. The zero point lets the machine know where the cutter is relative to the material. Setting the zero point manually is quite easy. It's usually set in the corner of the workpiece to be machined. The spindle is lowered step by step in the z-axis until it touches the material surface as little as possible and zero is pressed in all axes. The machine is ready for operation. Don't forget that the operator of a CNC router is not someone who just presses start and goes for a coffee, but someone who must ensure that all programs are running correctly and make adjustments if necessary. Signals that settings need to be changed can be uncharacteristic sounds during operation, material chipping or vice versa, melting and sticking to the cutter. In order to work with a CNC router, it's necessary to have knowledge of the peculiarities of machining certain materials in order to choose the right tool and suitable parameters and to be able not only to work with a CNC router but also to carry out maintenance. An experienced operator is able to work on several machines at the same time, especially when the production process of a particular part has already been established. When it comes to the initial startup of a new part in production, however, more time and material may be needed to work out the control program. Remember to take this into account. After making the prototype, measure its parameters and check whether they match the set parameters. If not, make adjustments accordingly. Before placing new material on the workbench, be sure to remove any waste material from the previous piece. Otherwise, the material may not lie flat, resulting in distorted geometry during machining. If you have any questions, write them down below in the comments section we'll be happy to answer them. If you require CNC milling equipment, we invite you to view a consultation and an online demo of our machines. This is the Verma team. See you in the next video.